Gary here again and today I'd like to talk about pupil observation. Just some basic first rules about pupil observation. Um, you need to be sitting in the right place to be able to see what the pupil is doing. So what do I mean by that? Well you'd be sitting obviously in the passenger seat not in the back seat um, but the seating position is very important. If you try and move the seat as far back as it will go and maybe move the back of the seat, the rake of the seat back a little bit so that you're sitting a bit further back you will be able to see uh, what the pupil is doing a lot easier, particularly if they're a very tall pupil and they have their seat quite far back. You wouldn't want to be sitting in front of them um, because you wouldn't see at all what they were doing. So try and move your seat as far back as you can. Some people feel a little bit um, uncomfortable with that to begin with because they, they like to be sitting closer to the pedals. But the pedals really shouldn't be necessary and if they are necessary you should still be able to reach the brake and stop the car if you need it. Um, if you can't, then you'd have to move a little bit further forward just so that you could reach it, but try not to be sitting right on top of the pedals, um, move the seat as far back as it'll go. A lot of instructors used to sit um, in the corner of the seat, um, but there was, there was a bit of a health and safety issue about that, so the, uh, the DSA kind of frown on that a little bit now. So try not to sit too far in the corner of the seat so that your head is between the head restraint and the door window because uh, if there was an accident your head would go in between that way instead of being supported by the head restraint. So try and sit uh, with your head uh, at the back of the head restraint but, um, but so that you can actually see what the pupil is doing you can turn slightly in the seat so that you can see what they're doing. So that's how to sit to begin with and then um, how to observe the pupil, when to look where. You really need to follow routines as much as you can. So. If the pupil is going to be, let's say, moving off, um, then you will be watching them prepare the car, uh, looking at the, uh, the way that they prepare the car with the feet and the hands, and then the observation with the eyes. When you take observations, always do the observation after the pupil. So let's say, for example, a blind spot. Um, if you turn around to look at the blind spot before the pupil, for a start you wouldn't really know if the pupil had looked, um, but also it might prompt the pupil into looking, and particularly um, later on when you try and transfer responsibility you don't want to be giving them too much of uh, uh, a kind of a prompt if you like to check the blind spot by you looking first um, it'll kind of remind them that they need to look so wait until they look and then you take the observation afterwards uh, that goes for the mirrors as well um, try to always be aware of what's in the mirrors but uh, make sure that you're watching what the pupil's doing and when they look you look and that'll emphasise whether the mirror check or the observation, the blind spot, or even at junctions, if you try and look after the pupils look, that's quite difficult um, because you'll want to look at the junction, say a T-junction, you'll want to look to see if anybody's coming. But if you look before the pupil, again you can miss whether the pupils look correctly or not. Uh, and if it's clear, you'll let them come out because you know it's clear and you might uh, miss the fact that they've not looked and so it wouldn't have been safe if they'd been left on their own. So try to look after the pupil, it is quite difficult to do that, um, but try and get into the habit of, just as after they've looked, you take a quick look. <laughs> Excuse me, the dog keeps moving the camera. <laughs> okay. So, <clears throat> if, um, if you look after the pupil, it'll emphasise the fault to you, you'll know that this a fault occurred, um, and it'll be a lot easier for you to uh, spot, the, spot the fault. So, another way of uh, thinking about it is follow the routine, as I said. If you're uh, going to be using MSM, or people should be using MSM, then think about looking for their eyes, um, their hands, um, and then the feet. So, you're looking at the eyes for the mirror checks, the hands for the signal, and then the feet. You can feel certain things, and you can hear certain things. So, you can feel when the car's slowing down, for example, but you wouldn't know whether it was with, with the left foot that they were using on the brake or the right foot without looking at it. And I know that sounds stupid, but people, pupils do use the wrong feet for pedals. So if you look, as well as feeling what's happening, then it will confirm to you whether it was correct or not. Same with the signal. You might be able to hear the signal ticking away, but you wouldn't know whether it was left or right without looking at what the pupil's done. So try and follow the routine. Eyes, hands, feet. If they look in the mirrors, look at their eyes. If it's something to do with the hands, the steering, the signal, the gears, uh, look at the hands and then the feet for the pedals. Also try and be aware of the pupil um, all the time as a whole so that you're not just 
specifically looking at certain times, but you're always aware of what the pupil's doing. So at the corner of your eye, you might see their leg move, their left leg on the clutch maybe, um, and it'll just prompt you to look at it and think, what are they doing with that clutch? Why are they putting the clutch down at this point? Um, so be, always be aware of the pupil. It becomes a sixth sense after a while, and you won't have to stare too much at the pupil to make them feel uncomfortable, but you'll always be aware of what they're doing. Um, so never trust the pupil either. So when you give an instruction, um, it's important that you do actually look to see if they've carried out that uh, instruction. So you might say, check your interior mirror and your left mirror. But if you're not actually looking at them at that point, you wouldn't know whether they'd check the mirrors or not. So don't trust the fact that just because you've told them to do it, that they've done it. They might even reply yes or something like that, but quite often they don't do it. So do look for that. Also, you've got to remember that during the test, you're dealing with an examiner that's playing the role of a pupil. So they won't crash the car. Um, they'll try not to anyway. There might be extreme examples. But um, not like a pupil. You can trust them a lot more than you can a pupil. So you instinctively you'll want to be looking outside quite a lot. And it's important, obviously, to know what's happening, what's coming up. And there will be external faults that you'd have to look for. Um, for example, if you're just staring at the pupil uh, and not paying attention to maybe how close they're getting to park cars, you would miss that fault. So you do need to be aware of the overall picture. But what I'm trying to say is you can trust them a little bit more. So make sure that when you need to look at the pupil, you are looking at the pupil. A very good thing to do um, to begin with is to give a direction to the pupil, to the, to the pupil's face, should I say. So when the examiner says to you, take the next left, next right, and you're going to trans translate that into terminology, you would turn to the pupil, look at them, and then say, please take the next road on the left. So you're actually looking to see at that point if they're going to check the mirrors. Because if you're looking ahead, at the junction maybe, and you say, take the next road on the left, by the time you look at the pupil, they might have already checked the mirrors, and you wouldn't know whether they've done it or not. You could then be uh, talking about a fault that wasn't there, um, and it becomes difficult really to spot the faults when they are there. So make sure that whenever you give a direction, you're always looking at the pupil. And then follow the routine, as I said before. Um, so that you're following not just their eyes but the hands and the feet. Now finally I just want to talk about um, eyeball mirrors. You might have heard of eyeball mirrors uh, or you might not have heard them called that but it's a little mirror that sometimes um, you might see in the corner of the um, driving school car and uh, it's, it's usually uh, near side left top corner of the windscreen and it points towards the pupil's eyes. Some instructors use that so that they can see whether the pupil is checking the mirrors and what their eyes are doing. I wouldn't recommend you doing that at all um, because it gets you into the habit of only looking at what's happening at the top half. You won't see what's happening further down with the hands and the feet. And so you might spot everything that they're doing with their eyes, with the um, observations of the mirrors and at junctions and things, but you wouldn't really know um, what they're doing at, with the feet or the hands unless you're looking at that. And you can quite easily miss faults that way. You'll get into the habit of not bothering to look down there. So if you're looking at the pupil, um, you won't need the eyeball mirror you'll see what they're doing with their eyes um, without the need of that. But if you get into the habit of using it, it's going to be difficult then to get out of it. So I wouldn't start with that at all. If anybody advised you to use one, my advice would be don't do it. So I hope that's helped with pupil observation. I'll go through just a little slideshow to show you the key points again and uh, look forward to seeing you soon. Bye.